Hi, my name is Susan Weimer, and I am thrilled to be on the W Plus 9 blog today with this video on how to use the chalkboard technique. Um, I am thrilled to be here because I have long admired Dawn's artistry and respected her teaching and her dedication to this industry. So again, I'm thrilled to be here. I was inspired by something that my daughter recently did with a chalkboard design, and so here we go. We are going to use the lattice frame onward and upward, and we're gonna use the top sentiment change can be difficult at times, and then the modern roses, which I hadn't had a chance to use yet, and then I have the accompanying dies. Some W plus nine black cardstock, which is yummy. These very, very old charts, we won't discuss their age. Or, um, and what we're gonna end up using is this very old pastel white stick. Um, and we could have, I could have tried regular chalk, but I couldn't find it. Um, this is Ranger Antiquities Frosted Crystal. That's the embossing powder that's necessary for this. Um, I have a white eraser and my Misty. So here's the lattice panel, and I'm going to put it in my Misty and set the magnets down on top of that, and then take that main sentiment and make it the focal image right there in the middle. So I'm just gonna get that in there. Excuse my head. Um, and get that started. So I am going to stamp this a couple of times because I want to make sure that I get a clear image. And um, I do also want to note that once again, if you've ever watched my channel before, you know that I'm always forgetting to use my embossing buddy. With this technique, it is crucial that you use your embossing buddy. You may say, uh oh, but you didn't. And I will tell you that I spend some time cleaning up some messes because whatever little specks are left behind after you heat emboss um, will pick up the chalk. So yeah, don't do as I do, do what I say. So use your embossing buddy. So anyway, here's my um, frosted crystal antiquities um, powder. And you can see I'm already starting to fix that away. And I'm going to have my heat gun heated up here off to the side. And we're going to heat emboss this. And as it is heat embossed, unlike other embossing powders, it will turn clear. Um, kind of like a clear embossing powder, but if you look at it, it's a little bit more speckled. I don't know how else to explain it. So here I'm coming in with my pastel stick. It's a soft pastel. I don't exactly remember what they're called. And I'm just going to go over this. Um, and try to give it that chalky look. I've done this before um, years ago, and this technique I learned it on, I think from an online card classes class on embossing. But anyway, it's a popular thing that's that's back. I did it for my daughter-in-law's bridal shower, my daughter's bridal shower, a baby shower, like so. Anyway, it's lots of fun, and it just gives something different, a uh, different look to the card. And um, like I said, my daughter had just made this cute little sign for my granddaughter, who's her niece, and it was just adorable. Um, so I thought, oh, hey, why not? Let's pull something out of the olden days, if you will, ha -ha, just three years ago, I think, maybe more. So I wanted to preserve some of the black around the lattice as, as you would try to keep the wood clean around a chalkboard. So I'm just gonna use this white eraser and it is a fairly clean one, just a regular old one, and um, clean it up. And if you clean up too much, you can go back in with your finger and rub it over the chalky part and get some more chalk distributed on your paper. So no, that's not perfect, but I don't want it to be. So I'm going to now start stamping out my florals. So. I originally had wanted to color these with no line, and then I thought, oh goodness gracious, I cannot do no line on W plus nine channel. So I just used a solid black um, from the Mento Tuxedo um, as my ink of choice um, for Copics. Yes, because that's what we're gonna use. Excuse me, Copics. I know, I know what I'm saying. So I think this would look really pretty no line coloring <laughs> but again it wasn't something that i was going to ever try on the w plus night channel because dawn is the queen of no line coloring 
I highly recommend her no line coloring videos for watercolor and Copic markers. I think they're back in the sections of the video of the channel where she's uh, working with modern anemones. Pretty sure. Um, this is how I, I tried to color as closely to her way as possible. So one of the things I've been learning recently is about using complementary colors um, and to make a more desaturated color where objects are in the shadows. So I've added some G00. Green is the complement of orange, not orange, oh goodness gracious, red. And this is an RV. So that was an RV 14, and now I'm using RV 11, no, 13. I'm going to come in with RV11 and a smidgy bit probably of RV10. And you can see how on the bottom there, it's just not a dark, dark pink. It's a grayish pink, which is what shadows are more um, muted and grayed in tone. So that's why I decided to do this. I was trying to, I guess, go for a more realistic look, but then when you think about it, I've got a black outline stamped image. So I, I, I could have just done the usual Copic marker blend, but hey, I had fun and um, I tried something new. And in fact, off to the side as I'm sitting here, I can see my um, color swatching to see which shade of green I liked the best. So these are the leaves and the opposite of green is red. So we have a lot of compliments in here. And I'm just going to touch up where I think the shadows are, excuse that I'm off camera there, with some R0, R, yeah, R00, and then I'm using YG01, YG01, and then I have a G20, goodness, who knows what I'm using. I'm sorry, I will have this in the description box below if I can figure out what I did. That's YG17, my favorite green, so I know that. And then YG13, and YG11. So I'm just going to repeat this process and I always am going to start mapping my shadows out with my complementary color or my darkest Copic. Um, I think that's important to do so that we understand the structure of the leaf because that's what determines how we color it. <coughs> Excuse me, allergy season. So now, excuse my phone because that's where my reference photo is. I am adding some it's like a brownish greenish um, detail to the flower to again make those shadows mirror muted and um, so excuse the phone as I said the reference photo is there and I was getting so absorbed into the coloring I don't know if you ever do that that I forget my surroundings and I forget that I'm actually filming a video so now I have my indigo prismacolor pencil that I use all the time to cover in the nooks and the crannies as Kathy Wilkinson would say, um, I do love the way she colors, and one of these days I'm going to whip out my um, Tombow markers and see if I can imitate her. <laughs> now nah, i got to come up with my own style. Come up with your own style. Just take lessons from other people. So I've just done this, and I repeated the process for all of the leaves, all of the flowers, and yes, I did put some Copic back on top of some colored pencil. Shh, don't tell. My nibs have never been ruined, but do this at your own risk. They advise you not to, so don't. Um, so I'm getting, I'm just putting in these, uh, it's a, like a brownish green. Goodness, what's the name of that color? I'll have to go look it up. But anyway, so we're going to finally finish that. And so I have die cut everything out with the accompanying um, cuts from, um, die cuts from, W plus nine, and then I'm using some Gina K Connect glue to adhere down the individual pieces. And I decided not to use the very largest flower. It was just too big and too overwhelming for um, the little small area where the sentiment is. And I'm trying to sort of make two different corners so it's not precisely symmetrical, which is unlike me because I'm usually pretty matchy matchy. Um, but I'm trying to be a little more Organic's the wrong word. Um, spontaneous. No, I don't know what it is. Make it not look so planned and matchy-matchy. So I'm just going to hang this down. 
This would be a really cute uh, wedding card or a baby shower or bridal shower card. Um, it's just pretty. and I But I love the sentiments from Onward and Upward because I do think um, we need to remember that um, life happens and we still need to move forward. Um, so, and I did this as much for myself as for anybody else. Um, actually, I was pretty selfish. I needed to remember that sentiment, so I kind of made this up. I'll probably keep it on my desk. So, these are just, this is just 3M foam tape, and I'm going to pop that up, and we're going to put that there. And there's the card, and I adhered it to a 110 Nina Solar White um, top folding card base. And he, Oh, I'm going to trim off the excess, so this looks a little bit better. If I were going to give this in a, a, as a gift, if I was presenting this with a like a baby shower, a bridal shower gift, or uh, even a wedding gift, I usually make my own envelopes and I keep them larger and I let overhangs happen. Thank you for joining me here today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That lets know Dawn what content she would like to bring forward in the future. The products that I used are listed in the description box below. And if you haven't already joined um, W Plus 9's channel, please do so. I've learned so much here and I can't speak highly enough of Dawn and her team um, and the number of hours I really have spent here learning. So thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.